Hello, thank you for joining me today on Christian Coffee with Crunchy Berries. I'd like to thank everybody for their comments and their support. And thank you for the uh, criticism. Um, that's how we learn and uh, improve. I can edit that. Why do you do a long break like that? Because I think. I oh. can't think on my feet. I don't. My coffee's filled with tea. <laughs> I had McDonald's coffee earlier. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> you should have brought it with you. Drink it. But you should have brought the empty cup. Yeah, it has pretzels. <laughs> pretzels in yeah, it? Yeah, now I got tea. Why does it have pretzels in it? It's good tea. Okay, anyways. They fell out of the Oh, out yeah. Of okay. <laughs> In this video here, we will start with chapter one. This video will include um, just chapter one. Um, I'd like to get going, get the comments going, get some encouragement going. Um, I wanted to do one through three, uh, but I'm going to start with one until everybody can get uh, going, get the comments going, and uh, then we'll speed it up a little. Um, the next video will include chapters two and three, if you want to include those in your comments and notes. Um, I will provide links in the side if you'd like to go uh, look at things. Um, it'll be chapter one of Revelations and a couple other goodies uh, that I find for you guys to check out and you know learn some more again. For me the, the book of Revelations is a message from Jesus to his church. Um, it begins with the glorious appearance of Jesus uh, to John in which uh, Jesus commissions John to write down what he has seen and what's about to be revealed to him would be how do we strengthen people who are persecuted for being Christians and how do we motivate God rejecting people to repent and turn to him we tell them uh, what happens in the future uh, which is the book of revelations so uh, hopefully uh, the God rejecting uh, individuals um, who, you know, stumble across, you know, our channel. Um, we'll see what is to happen in the future and repent their ways and come to know Jesus. But I would also like to say um, some of the early manuscripts of the book of Revelations um, were titled the Apocalypse of John, which Apocalypse translates um, to Revelation, um, the act of unveiling. Um, so in the first chapter, um, there is unveiling to John. Um, in verse 3, um, it says that, uh, blessed is he that reads, and hears the words of this prophecy, and keeps those things written therein, for the time is at hand. So that means we're blessed for reading and studying together. My favorite verse coming up is verse number 5. And this is why. It says, it is an awesome verse. Love this verse. It's cool. Okay, it says, And from Jesus Christ, I'm going to read, I'm not going to read all the verses, but this is like my favorite verse in this whole chapter, so I'm going to read this one. Okay. It says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That means all our sins are forgiven. So that's a pretty good verse. I love that verse. That's a good, that's one of our verses that uh, we can put on a note card and um, commit it to memory. That's pretty good. I like that verse. Okay, verse 7 goes into, uh, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him which I find very interesting um, to me that, that says uh, everybody is going to see Jesus when he comes back the second coming of Jesus which I believe is different than the rapture so in the second coming everybody sees Jesus and in the rapture um, the people are taken and the unbelievers they, they don't see anything but poof yep, there went the neighbor you know. is it the second coming the rapture? no the second coming is different from the rapture 
the people that are raptured come back with Jesus in the second coming. Which is my understanding. If I'm wrong, please help me out. <laughs> I'm still, you know, learning myself. John was instructed to write what he sees and hears and uh, in a book to let um, the seven churches of Asia know um, what is to come. Um, he hears a voice um, saying that I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in the book. Now John, you know, uh, looks over to see who's talking to him. You know, he wants to see. And um, he saw seven golden candlesticks, which is really awesome. And, and in the middle, the, in the midst of these golden candlesticks, or these seven candlesticks, um, there was one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, it says, one like the Son of Man, which is in verse 13, if you want to um, check, go there, you know, check it out. <laughs> um, indicates that a person was not a, um, like, grotesque, supernatural person. Um, it is rather, you know, the appearance of the person in the midst of the candlesticks was human. Which is, which is interesting. Um, clothed with a garment down to, to the feet. Um, typically high priests. Wore long robes as they ministered in the holy place in the temple. And Jesus is the great high priest in our relationship with God. And his eyes were the flames of fire. That's pretty awesome. Imagine seeing that seven golden candlesticks. In, in the middle is, is Jesus in the midst of all these golden candlesticks. He has white hair and he's robed and has eyes of fire. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. And his feet are like fine brass. And uh, his voice was the sound of many waters. Which is real peaceful in it, in my opinion, just listening to the water trickle, trickle, trickle. Very good. And he had at his right hand seven stars, and he had a two edged sword which came from his mouth. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Now, what, what does that say to us? We'll, we'll take that one. Um, the Greek construction is literally his eyes shot fire. In the final verse of the chapter, the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks are the seven churches. So, from what I'm gathering is, Jesus is standing there in the middle of the seven churches. Thoughts or comments or something I missed, uh, please leave in the comment box. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Holiness, holiness is what you are